Hey, First Assembly, I want to welcome you to the new year and to Wednesday Word. Hey, listen, it's so good to be with you this evening, man. I want to thank you for joining. And, uh, you know, we have kind of been in a series closing out the year of... Uh, of detours and and just going to continue to walk in that i think it's still incredibly relevant i believe god is saying this to us that that there are detours in our lives i mean what do you do when life takes a turn and and the truth is this is part of life um yeah we're, we're probably not sitting here trying to figure out what that means or what that feels like all of our lives have experienced these things change is going to come and even though you know, we don't always like it. You can try to fight it. You can try to resist it. Uh, what I've learned in my life is that sometimes the things that caught me off guard and turned, um, now looking back, I see it as part of the plan of God for my life. And uh, But what makes it hard is we don't always know. Uh, what makes it hard is what are the things I'm supposed to fight and what are the things that I'm supposed to trust and embrace. And uh, this is what I know. In it all, um, I'm going to pray. In it all, I'm going to trust in the Lord. And, and I really do believe that His Spirit is with us, and I really do believe that God will lead us. And if it is of Him, God will grant me the strength to walk through things. If it is not of Him, I believe His Word teaches us that He will make a way of escape for our lives. And I trust that. I, I trust that with my life, my home, and my family, and and my church. And, and uh, I just believe in every situation that we find ourselves in, no matter what it is, whether today you're excited about what's happening or today it's a battle or a struggle, I believe in the situation that we are in right now that there is a way for us to honor God. And I think that is always my goal. How can God receive glory in this from me? Um, and some of that is, is stay humble and stay trusting. Stay humble and trust the Lord. And I just think it's so important for you and I to listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives um, and to not continue to carry things that weigh us down and burden us down that try to mislead us or, uh, or distract us. You know, God knows. God knows what you're dealing with. He knows what's coming your way. He knows uh, how you need to be prepared for it to overcome it. He knows where He wants you to be. And he will get you there as you trust him. And so no matter where you are in the process of your life, you can honor God where you are. I do believe that. And so what is God trying to teach you? Uh, what are the things that you need to own? Uh, what are the things that maybe you're realizing, hey, I need, to, I need to adjust here. You know, I need to change some things here. Um, because I think part of living a healthy life is understanding change and detours are part <coughs> of that life. Uh, you know, what are the places I keep ending up? And what do I need to learn from this? How do I need to grow in this? You know, it's, it's as we're tested that our hearts are revealed. And, and I think over the last couple of years, um, a lot of hearts have been revealed. Things have come to surface. And, and, and this is where the, the key thing happens. And that's this, is what's in the heart is going to come out of the heart when the pressure rises. And uh, we see that. Luke 6, chapter 6, you know, what you say flows from what is in your heart. And we don't always like that because we don't always like what comes out of our, our mouths. We don't always like what comes out of our hearts, but that's what was in there. <coughs> we spoke a couple weeks ago about um, when things are tough, uh, even though I ended up in the right place, have I done damage in the lives of those I care about getting to that right place? You know, a detour comes, a change comes, something happens, and uh, it is possible to end up at the right place, but get there incorrectly. Um, and what I mean by that is this, my emotions take control, my anger, my frustration, my control, my whatever, and I can be sharp-tongued and hard on people. And then you kind of have your moment where you calm down a little bit and you start thinking clearer and you go, okay, here's what I need to do to get to the right place. And you get to the right place, but have we done damage in the journey to the people who are around uh, our lives? Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad you got to the place you needed 
to be, but did we kill people with our words on the way there? And, and so what is in your heart really matters uh, because that's what's going to come out of our lives when the pressure's on. And, and so living a life of being in his presence is so important because that's how we keep our cup full uh, of the right stuff. You know, uh, Proverbs 4.32 says, Above all else, guard your hearts, uh, for everything you do flows out of it. Um, you know, what a simple, beautiful, powerful uh, scripture. You know, if I don't like the things that are flowing out of my life, I have to first and foremost look within me because this is where it comes from. You know, we say, oh, they made me angry, and that's why I said. They they ticked me off, and, and that's why I reacted but the truth is, their actions may have caused what's in your cup to spill out. And, and so everything comes from our hearts. It flows from us. So I want to spend less time complaining about what I don't like and more time, more energy, more love, figuring out how to honor God um, in it. And so preparation for bigger things is always found in smaller things. And so little stuff matters. It's little foxes that spoil the vine. And if that's true and it's scripture, so it is, then little victories also help bear bigger fruit in my life. And so, so much of what you and I are called to do is to stay steady and faithful in the things of God. Um, I don't know if it's always mountaintops or valleys. I think that there's just a steady pull, a steady journey that we are on with Christ day to day to day to day that might end up feeling normal and might end up feeling casual, but I think is so critical in our lives. How do I stay steady? How do I stay faithful in the things of God? And, and to trust that God will be with me as I navigate this life with Him. Because um, rarely does God take us in a straight line. Um, I just think rarely does God make it super simple. And detours that we experience, I think, while you may not see it in the moment, I think looking back, uh, you'll see that these were times that God was fixing something. God was repairing something. God was revealing something. You know, God uses detours to grow us. You know, he doesn't just take us on a detour just because. You know, there's always an intention, always a purpose um, to correct or to heal or to strengthen, there's always a reason. Uh, and, and truthfully, some of the hardships we go uh, through can be poor decisions on our point. You know, uh, you know it, it's not always where's God blaming God. If you make foolish decisions, you know, there's an old saying that says, you know, play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes. And, you know, if we make foolish decisions, there are often consequences for those choices. Um, you know, other times, though, there are times that God leads us, and in obedience, we end up in challenging times. And how do you know the difference? How do I know the difference between, is this decisions that I have made that have brought me to this place, or is this something that I'm following God, I'm in the right place, but it's just a place of struggle? And I think this, if you are suffering for doing the right thing, then it's probably a God thing. Uh, if you are struggling because you did the godly thing, then it's probably a right thing. Uh, Joseph was in prison because he did the right thing. Uh, Daniel got thrown into the lion's den because he did a right thing. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace because they did the godly thing. And so whenever you're struggling or suffering because of a decision that you made in obedience to what God has said in his word or God has led you to, your struggle is often right where God wants you to be. God is not afraid of struggle. You know, we kind of think when, oh, when I'm right with God, everything's easy. That's not always true. I think sometimes you can be absolutely right with God and in the middle of a very intense battle. You know, God is not freaked out by struggle. Um, you know, following God sometimes has a price. Uh, I know we say salvation is free, and it is. It's a gift that is offered to you. But following Christ, there is a cost. You know, sacrifice will cost you something, or else it's not really sacrifice. It's real and it's tangible. Doing the right thing might make people mad. Living in a godly way might cause some people to not want to be around you if they don't want to live in that way. And so there are truths that the way I live my life can affect things that happen around me. And sometimes struggle happens when you are perfectly in God's um, will. Uh, the greater the calling, the deeper the pit. The higher the destiny, the tighter the shackles, the more glorious the future, the more persecuted the present. 
Uh, and again, there can be consequences of bad decisions and choices that we deal with. Uh, I do it about every two to three months. Uh, Pastor Dustin will say, hey, what do you think about Taco Bell? And I think, yeah, you know, I haven't had Taco Bell in a while. Um, and every time, as soon as I eat it, I'm reminded of why I don't want Taco Bell. Uh, and, and sometimes we make decisions that just come back to haunt us. They come back to hurt us. And, and other times there are detours that are absolutely God-led, God-inspired, God-intended, and God-used in our lives. And so suffering for doing what is right is often a way that God tests us. Uh, Joseph ended up in prison because he refused to dishonor God with Potiphar's wife. Uh, and so one of the ways that you know if you're suffering is if God shows you his presence, if God gives you favor, if God joins you in it. Uh, you know, Daniel ended up in the lion's den. God didn't keep Daniel from being in the lion's den. He met him in it. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they threw him in the fiery furnace. And when they looked down, they said, did we not throw three? Because I see four. Uh, God joins you in the moment. He joins you in the struggle. And so God didn't keep Joseph from being sold into slavery. He gave him favor in it. And you see that when he was in Potiphar's house. You see that when he was in prison. Uh, verse 39, 20, says, The Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. And so when any of us are in situations that we don't like or want to be delivered from, we pray this, God, get me out. God, get me out. God, make a way. God, provide a door. God, break the chains. We want out of situations that make us uncomfortable. But here's the thing. If it isn't time for us to be removed, instead of looking for God to get me out, I need to look for God in it with me. We tend to look for the door and not his hand. Uh, do you see in your life, in times of trial and struggle, God's favor on you? Are you experiencing his presence with you? You say, Pastor, I don't know. Then my next question is this, are you looking for it? Because we have this mindset, if I'm in struggle, if I'm in battle, if it's intense, you know, I may not be in the right place. And that simply isn't true all the time. You may be exactly where God wants you because God is going to use this to teach you something and show you something. You know, the key to Joseph's life was that God was with him, and that's the key to everything. God is with me, and I am with God. And when I know that and understand that, it helps me to engage in the good times and the struggle times differently. You know, where I am doesn't matter as much as God is with me. And, and the type of thing that I'm going through doesn't matter as much as he is with me in it. Um, because while he was in Potiphar's house, came in, you know, as, as a servant, God elevated him. Why? God had his hand on him. He had favor. He goes to prison. While he's in prison, he's elevated to a place of leadership. Why? Because the Spirit of God was with him and gave him favor. The Word about God goes on to say that the warden didn't worry about anything that was under Joseph's care because the Lord had made him successful in everything that he did. You know, sometimes the way God shows up isn't by delivering you, but it can be by delivering you in it, granting you favor in the midst of it. And so what are some of the things that we see in the pattern that God used in the life of Joseph? All right, Potiphar promoted him over the head of his house. God was with him. God made everything he did successful. Joseph found favor with him in the prison. Again, same thing. Jailer took notice, promoted him. And, and I, I'm a pattern person. I think, you know, uh, you know, God never changes. He's the same day to day uh, while his mercies are new and, and his spirit is, is, is new. Um, there are things we can look and say, hey, God is faithful. That's what consistent and faithful. You know, Gideon told God, hey, listen, I need to hear from you. And so he put a skin out and, and, and said, hey, let the fleece be wet, the ground be dry. And it was. And then the next day he flipped it and said, hey, let the fleece be dry and the ground be wet. And it was. Well, what's the pattern in that? And I think sometimes we get in stuff and we don't always look for him in it. And we can miss what God is doing and what God is saying. It was about Gideon knowing that God was with him. And if we can look at our, our lives with spiritual eyes, you may see more patterns than you imagine that are at work in your life currently. You know, has God given you favor? Doesn't mean that I'm in an easy time. Maybe you're in a challenging time right now. But God is providing. I feel peace. 
I feel hope. I'm in something, but I realize I'm not in it alone, that he is with me. God doesn't always take us out of the detour, but knowing he's with us gives us peace in the midst of the detour. And that applies to anything. That can be financial. That can be relational. That can be health issues, employment issues, uh, whatever issues that aren't changing. Simply listen for his voice. Do you sense the presence of God with you? Can you feel his favor, his hand on your life, despite adversity and despite pain that is around us? God was with Joseph in the pit. God was with Joseph in the prison because God always has a plan. His word says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Another thing to watch is that when you're on your way to your destiny and you're currently in a detour, uh, God can give you a ministry to others who may be walking through similar things. Now, I've said this before, detours are rarely ever just about you. Uh, if you're driving down 95 and there's an accident and there's a detour, everyone traveling 95 is going to have to take that. And so God gives you people to serve even while you're suffering. And you might say, Pastor, that's not fair. But here's the thing. I don't know if it's about fairness. I think it is about faithfulness. Uh, Pharaoh was angry. Uh, a cupbearer and a baker, they'd thrown them into prison. They ended up under Joseph's care. You can read about that in Genesis chapter 41 through 4. And yet these two that had offended Pharaoh were part of the destiny of the life of Joseph. Before God used them, he served them. You know, he had to learn to look beyond his own struggle to minister to people who were also in struggle. You see, Joseph was in the same prison they were. He wasn't fun. It wasn't enjoyable. And yet, in the way that he lived his life, he saw them. And the word says he saw they were downcast and he spoke to them to encourage and he ministers to them. Listen, when we struggle or we're in pain, we tend to become very self-absorbed. Um, and I get this. Like when I get physically sick, you know, some people when they're sick want everybody, oh, bring me this. For me, it's leave me alone. I want, I want room temperature ginger ale. I want to get under about four blankets and I'm going to sweat this thing out. Just leave me be. Just let me go. Um, you know, we tend to be very self-absorbed. We can be very self-focused when we're uncomfortable, when we are sick, when we are going through trials. Um, you know, I can't help you. I got my own stuff. I don't have the energy to handle my own life right now, my own wounds right now. I got to be about me. But so often, part of our healing, I think, is loving and serving others. In Genesis chapter 46 and 7, it says, When Joseph saw them the next morning, he's talking about the cupbearer and the baker, he noticed they both look upset. Uh, why do you look so worried today, he asked them. See, most people get selfish in their suffering, but the righteous response to the suffering is to help, is to love, is to encourage. I pray this over my kids every day. Let our words be building and encouraging and edifying of people's lives. Um, the same amount of time it takes for you to be short uh, or dismissive of someone, the same amount of time you can be loving and encouraging of someone. All right. One of the ways that God moves you through the detours is through ministry to others. Um, while I'm dealing, God uses me to help bless someone else. Uh, and I think often by me not being willing to love and to serve and to help others, I can actually delay uh, my own healing and my own destiny. You know, They had a dream and they were upset about it. And through Joseph, God interpreted the dream. God used the gift that he had put into the life of Joseph. And it was the very thing that later in his life, two years later, that God used to elevate him out of the prison into the palace. And so his willingness to use the gift that God had given him while he was dealing with his own stuff was the thing that God used to elevate him to the place that God initially wanted him to be. You know, you want God to show up in your detour? Serve somebody. Love somebody. Encourage somebody. Love hurting people. Um, because that's the nature and the heart of God. And I don't think you have to be sophisticated about it. Just use the gift that God has given you when you see someone who may need it. Ministry was never intended to really stop in the midst of waiting. You know, we have that verse we quote all the time. Psalms 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This isn't saying I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stand here until God makes everything right. That's not what that's saying. He's not saying that. This is more, this verse is really a challenge to the enemies of God. Saying, hey, listen, you're fighting them, but what you're really fighting is me. 
And God has this. God's about to show up and to show off. And so be still. Uh, be still. He, he, you, know, you, you don't have to do what I'm going to do. I'll do that. You just keep loving, keep serving, keep giving, keep caring. And even though there's an enemy that is attacking and a detour that you're on, you stay faithful to the things of God because I, God, have granted you my presence and I will cover you. I'll be your defender. Don't let your misery keep you out of ministry. Don't do it. Uh, you know, as a parent, sometimes uh, there's days you don't feel well. You don't get to stop parenting. Um, you know, as an employer, there's some days you're just not feeling it. You go into the office and you sit down at your desk and you just don't want to be there. But you plug on. You know, I think sometimes one of the things of God says, yeah, you're walking through a detour and it's not comfortable. It's uncomfortable and it's stretching. But stay faithful in it and continue to be who I have called you to be and created you to be because I'm using that to prepare you and grow you for the ultimate place I'll bring you. 2 Corinthians 1, 4 and 5 says this, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they're troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. For the more we suffer for Christ, the more God will shower us with His comfort through Christ. You know, the Ten Commandments, when you look at those, half of those are about relationship with God, honoring Him, love the Lord, all you walk through those. And the other half are about our relationship with each other. You know, our comfort comes from God. We connect vertically, and then we connect horizontally with each other in comfort. God even said in the New Testament, He said, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love God first and our neighbor as ourself. That's it. Loving Him and loving each other. It's not this or that, but it's both. It's both. And so if you're in detour, if you're in a season of struggle, if you're in a season that things aren't working the way you thought and you don't understand why I am where I am, I promise you there's someone on the journey and I want to challenge you to encourage them. Speak life to them. Walk with them in that journey. Encourage them in that thing because rarely ever are detours uh, alone. Most detours I have seen have lots of cars on them. So you're not the only vehicle. You're not the only vehicle impacted by what's going on. Uh, another thing uh, that God does sometimes is when God postpones your breakthrough. Now, I don't even want to talk about this one because I don't like it. It feels horrible. Um, it really does. But Joseph, after he loved the cupbearer, after he served the baker, interpreted their dreams, um, and what he said happened. The baker was taken and killed. The cupbearer was brought back into the palace. And Joseph says to them, it's the only time you really see Joseph kind of verbally documented the scripture, kind of in his flesh a little bit, saying, hey, listen, when you get back to the Pharaoh, tell him, don't forget me. Don't forget me. I shouldn't be in here. I'm in jail for doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. And so, brother, you got to help me out. And, and he does this. And the cupbearer forgets him. And he's there for another two years. All he asked was, remember me. And he didn't. And I've seen this in scriptures and I've seen this in life. God doesn't do the stuff you want uh, when you think it's the right time to do it. God has his own timing. Uh, like when it seems like it's happening and then God just goes, yeah, not yet. You know, you feel like things are finally going to get to where I think they ought to be. And God goes, no, that's, it's not the right path for you. Um, it's hard. That's hard. It's frustrating when you get so close to almost touch it, you know, so close you could see it. And then God says, it's not the right time. You know, Mary and Martha, they were angry at Jesus. Um, they just said, you know what, Lazarus is dead. If you had come when we called you, uh, this wouldn't have happened. They were angry. We told you. We told you. What good is God if God doesn't show up uh, when we need him? And, and we wrestle with these things. But here's my thing. God has a reason for delays. And sometimes it's for a greater purpose and a greater thing. Um, he could have shown up and healed Lazarus. But he showed up and he raised him from the dead. And it set in motion something far more uh, powerful. So we got to trust him. We have to trust him. We have to trust the Lord in the midst of our detour and our struggle. So tonight, do you feel stuck? You know, do you feel trapped? 
Uh, do you feel forgotten in a situation? You, Pastor, I've prayed, I've tried to honor him in this situation, and I just feel like it hasn't gotten me anywhere. I thought the breakthrough was there. I kind of thought this year was going to be the year. I thought 2022 was going to be the year of my breakthrough, and I had my, my phrase and my verse and everything, and it just felt a lot like 2021. And now I'm in 2023, and I don't even know what to say or what to hope for. You know, I could see it all, but it just seemed like it, it just disappeared disappear you know um, what God was preparing for Joseph and the nation of Israel was still a little ways ahead you know God's timetable is just not our timetable so stay steady and keep walking keep serving keep loving and I promise you that one day you will look and go I'm so glad I trusted because God's way is the best way. So let's honor him. First Assembly, I love you. I want to encourage you. Send this to somebody who may need to hear this encouragement. Maybe they're walking through something, going through a tough season. And you know what? When we go through things and we read and we pray, we just think, oh, it's something about me. What am I not doing? And sometimes it's not what you're not doing. Honor God and let's trust him. Hope to see you on Sunday. God bless.